Are you finding it difficult to actually hit your daily protein goal without blowing your calories out of the water? Well, if you find yourself in this situation often, then this is the right video for you. Today, we're gonna to talk about what are the top protein sources for a calorie deficit for trying to lose weight. More specifically, we're gonna talk about why protein is important for weight loss. We're also gonna look at 17 of the best protein options for weight loss and a calorie deficit. And we're gonna talk about some easy ways or tips and tricks to make sure that you're hitting your daily protein goal without going over your calories every day. So stay tuned. I'm Noah Casella, I'm a registered dietitian, and I help people just like you lose body fat, build muscle, and overall improve their eating habits and their behaviors. Why is protein so important for weight loss? Protein is important for weight loss for two reasons. Uh, first, protein helps maintain our lean body tissue or our muscle mass. Second, protein helps us stay fuller for longer periods of time. So in a nutshell, right, in order to lose weight, we need to be in a calorie deficit. Day after day, when we're adding up, not eating enough calories on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, week after week, we can actually start to see the scale go down because we're eating less calories than we're burning every single day. In that process though, there's a tendency for our body to lose weight from two areas, from body fat and from muscle mass. So in order to try and optimize for losing all of our weight from body fat and not losing it from muscle mass, eating enough protein can help facilitate that and make sure that we're not you know, eating a ton of our muscle in order to uh, survive because of our calorie deficit, right? We have enough of an outside source of amino acids and protein coming in to support that lean body tissue. In addition to supporting lean body tissue, protein also helps us stay fuller for longer, which is going to help us in the back end stay in our calorie deficit day after day. Protein will actually satiate you and keep you fuller for longer because it's a really dense nutrient, right? It normally takes a long time to break apart in our stomach, it spends a long time in our digestive, digestive tract, it takes a lot of energy to do that. And in that process, right, this is going to keep us satiated and fuller for longer, kind of calming those food noises uh, and those like hunger pains that we have that might come up otherwise if we don't have enough protein. So my example here would be like eating enough protein for breakfast, right? That's going to hold you over for quite a few hours. Like go eat several eggs with a couple pieces of toast and see how hungry you are immediately after that, an hour after that, two hours after that, three hours after that. Okay, now I'm starting to get a little bit hungry. Three to four hours after, I, I can have a snack or I can have lunch. Then you rinse and repeat that same philosophy for lunch and dinner, right? You're just setting yourself up for success when it comes to uh, weight loss and staying within your caloric budget. Let's jump into this list of the 17 best protein sources for weight loss. And in order to do so, I actually broke these up into four categories. The four categories that we're going to look at today are dairy and eggs, animal proteins like lean proteins, and we're also gonna look at fish in addition to beans and legumes. So those are gonna be our four sections. We're gonna talk about not only the protein sources and the calories that are associated with each, we're also gonna look at the other nutritional benefits of each of those food categories and including those in your diet. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into this. First food group that we're gonna talk about, which is gonna be dairy and eggs. Now, under each of these food groups that we're gonna talk about moving forward, we're gonna talk about three bullet points that are kind of their overview and highlight benefits of this category of food. So for example, for dairy, dairy typically is a highly digestible and absorbable uh, form of protein. In fact, the way that we base a majority of our protein on a scale is based on the amino acid profile or the protein within eggs. So these are like the pinnacle. Dairy and eggs are like the pinnacle of a protein source just because they really do provide us with all of the amino acids that we need in the exact amount of ratio. So it's really high quality protein. Second aspect is that dairy and eggs, dairy specifically tends to be a good source of calcium. So whether we're talking about milk or yogurt or cottage cheese, like any of these dairy sources, yes, they're also high in protein, but they also provide us with some calcium and some vitamin D typically. Lastly, dairy products and eggs tend to be actually exceptionally high in protein compared to the amount of calories provided. This can be a great example of Greek yogurt and of cottage cheese as well. So let's go ahead and dive into these a little bit further. Now, as far as dairy sources are concerned, I do recommend choosing a either a fat-free option or a reduced fat option in all cases, whether that is milk, yogurt, cottage cheese, cheese. We want to opt for the zero fat or the you know low fat options that's gonna do two things for you. A, it's gonna help bring down the total amount of calories that you're getting from that protein source because it's 
bringing down the total amount of fat. Dairy specifically and in animal products that you'll see later typically are higher in saturated fat. It's actually a fat that we want to try and get less of overall in our diet. So by choosing lower fat options, you're lowering the calories and you're lowering the overall dietary fat and more specifically the saturated fat content. The first one on our list today is Greek yogurt. This has to be one of my refrigerator staples. Because it's so versatile, I can add it to so many different things or I can just have it in a nice bowl. So for example, right, I can add it to a smoothie, I can add it to um, topping for some chili, I can have it as a bowl with some berries, some nuts, and some honey on top of it. It's so versatile, I have so many options, and for roughly about 100 calories per serving and give or take about 18 grams of protein, this has to be one of my favorite high protein food sources for weight loss for a calorie deficit. Next on our list is cottage cheese. Cottage cheese, again, is such a versatile ingredient. You can put it in just about anything and it just improves it and boosts the protein overall. For example, I love to put this uh, uh, cottage cheese in a recipe called my overnight oats recipes where right, this is one of my main protein sources that is coming from the cottage cheese in this recipe. I'll also like to add cottage cheese to beef up some scrambled eggs and add more protein and volume to some scrambled eggs without adding a ton of fat or anything else like that. I can also have just like a cottage cheese bowl with some sliced peaches and some almonds. Mm, chef's kiss, it's delicious. Such a great source of protein. And roughly for 80 to 120 calories and 13 grams of protein, this is another great high protein source for weight loss and a calorie deficit. Next up on our list is milk. Skim milk specifically is such an awesome source of a high quality protein and it's so easy to consume, right? There's no cooking involved, there's no prepped involved. Um, what I like to do is because an eight ounce glass of milk is roughly 80 calories and maybe eight to 13 grams of protein, I like to use it as kind of a a protein booster. So like if my protein is lacking for breakfast, I'm only having a couple of eggs and a piece of toast, well, I can have a glass of milk on the side to beef up that uh, protein as well. Finally, on our list of dairy specific high protein food sources for weight loss and a calorie deficit is low fat cheese. Now, you'll be surprised when you look at first of all, me recommending cheese for a weight loss or a calorie deficit and the amount of protein that's actually in low fat cheese. So as we are progressing through this, I think it's important to mention here that there are certain food groups that we should try and shoot for to consume a certain amount of servings per day. Dairy is one of those, or we should try and shoot for three servings. One serving of dairy being, you know, a cup of milk, a serving of yogurt, or a serving of low fat cheese, all of which are gonna provide you with some calcium and some vitamin D, things that are really hard to find, nutrients that are really hard to find in other food groups. So, right, by consuming these, we're not only getting that protein source, but we're also getting that um, calcium source. That's the same thing with cheese here, roughly around 50 to 80 calories for a string cheese, which is also gonna provide you with about six grams of protein. Next up are eggs. Eggs are honestly such a breakfast staple, whether it is for a breakfast scramble meal that you're having in the morning, or if it's just having a couple of hard boiled eggs for a snack in the afternoon, uh, eggs are a great source of high quality protein at roughly 60 to 70 calories per egg, uh, offering give or take about six grams of protein um, per egg as well. Finally on our list, egg whites. Egg whites are what I would consider almost a pure protein, right? There is nothing else in them. There's no fats, there's no carbs. You, all the calories that you're getting from egg whites are coming from protein. Like it is a pure, pure source of protein. You can throw them in just about anything, whether it is an egg baked dish or beefing up those scrambled eggs. You had like maybe two scrambled eggs, which gave you you know, roughly around 120 calories, another half a cup of egg whites brings you way up past probably 25, 30 grams of protein. And in addition, right, keeps those calories to maybe 150 tops and 200. Uh, so uh, it's a great source of protein that is a pure protein that can be added to just about anything. The next one I'm gonna mention here is actually gonna be protein powder. Now, it doesn't really fit in the dairy section. It doesn't really fit into the egg section uh, because it's like a supplement. It has been refined so much that it is like almost like those egg whites where it's only a pure protein. You're not getting really anything else out of it. No other vitamins, minerals, or anything like that, unless that company has kind of added them back into it. But nonetheless, it is a super convenient, easy way to get in about 24 grams of protein for about 100 to 120 calories. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our second section, which is going to be animal 
proteins. These again also are highly bioavailable. These are going to be providing us with a complete amino acid profile and a complete protein source and our bodies really do absorb it and digest it pretty well. There are several different sources that you can choose from, uh, which include chicken, turkey, pork chops, uh, and of course we'll get into seafood after this as well, but there are several different sources that we can choose from. Now, the one thing I do recommend here is opting for the lower fat options. So whether you're choosing beef or turkey or pork chops, like you're looking for the leanest cut, this is gonna, again, help bring down total amount of calories and bring down total amount of dietary fat intake specifically dietary fat intake from saturated fat. So let's go ahead and jump into our list here of animal proteins that are ideal protein sources for weight loss and a calorie deficit. First up on our list is chicken breast. Chicken breast is a lean, highly digestible, easy to manage protein source, ideal for weight loss and a calorie deficit, specifically because it offers about 26 to 27 grams of protein per serving at about 150 calories, it's really ideal. I personally love to batch prep like three or four days of chicken breast, whether that is slow cooking it in the crock pot or grilling up some chicken breasts on the grill and just having uh, the that meal prepped uh, beforehand so that right I can then just top a salad or I can add it to a plate of rice and veggies so I can have that protein source already made, planned, and ready to roll. Just makes my life that much easier. Next up on our list is ground turkey. Ground turkey, again, just like chicken Chicken breast is super versatile. You, you can make hamburger patties for turkey burgers. You can make meatballs for spaghetti. You can also just do ground turkey for things like tacos as well. It's so easy to use. It's in my meal prep rotation at least once a month. And at about 150 calories for 20 grams of protein, it's an ideal source. What I will say here with ground turkey is you want to try and choose one of the lower fat options. You want to choose ones that are going to be 93% or higher. That is going to be as far as fat-free content. The next one that made our list for animal proteins ideal for weight loss and a calorie deficit is going to be ground beef. Again, similar to the turkey breast or the ground turkey, you're going to want to choose a lower fat option. So like a 93, a 95, or even a 99% fat free ground beef is going to provide you with more protein, less overall calories, and less saturated fat. Again, super versatile. You can make patties with it and do hamburgers, meatballs. You can also do uh, just ground meat and put that on top of a salad or use it for tacos. Super versatile, love to have that protein included. Just remember that tip of just choosing a leaner source to bring down the total overall calories and it just makes it that much more ideal. In addition, red meat typically offers uh, a specific amount of iron that is ideal for us to try and digest and absorb. So that could be another benefit that you can see from eating red meat or ground beef uh, in the circumstances of trying to lose weight. The final protein source that we're gonna talk about under the animal sources of protein is gonna be pork chops and pork loins. Now, right, you probably don't think eating pork is going to be ideal for a protein source, right? Because we probably have associated this with like bacon or something along those lines. But no, pork chops and pork loins are pretty lean, right? At roughly like 160 to 180 calories, you're getting 22 to 24 grams of protein per serving. This is a great source of protein that's super easy to prepare. You can bake it or kind of pan fry it with some olive oil spray serve it with some potatoes or some rice. Uh, you could also, again, chop it up, serve it on a salad. And it just is another lean protein source that you can add into your rotation that, again, is super versatile, tasty, and you know low amount of calories compared to the amount of protein it has. Again, you wanna try to look for like leaner sources, like if there is fat, trim that away. Our third section of high protein sources that are low in calories, ideal for a calorie deficit and ideal for weight loss is going to be fish and seafood. Now fish and seafood specifically have a few characteristics of this food group overall. First and foremost, there are some pure protein options, things like shrimp and almost like tilapia. Uh, we could actually probably put tuna in there, right? They, they don't really offer anything else other than a protein source, right? So no fats, or no carbs, like super low calorie, ideal for what we're looking for. So uh, in addition to that, uh, marine protein sources can offer also some uh, healthy fats, some omega-3s. This can be identified in things and sources like uh, salmon or even sardines as well. Okay, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into our list of seafood and fish items. 
First on our list is gonna be salmon. Salmon takes the crown as far as a lean protein source that's ideal for a calorie deficit and weight loss because it not only offers us a lean protein source, but it also offers some healthy fats that are essential. Uh, these include omega-3s, and right, they're actually kind of hard to find other than, than some seafood, some nuts and seeds. So right, making sure that we're getting salmon in our diet on a regular basis can be really important, especially if we don't have another source of those omega-3s. At a roughly about 160 to 240 calories for a four ounce serving, uh, we're getting roughly 23 grams of protein for each portion or serving of salmon. Next up on our list is tilapia. Now tilapia is probably one of my go-to favorites and it is more aligned with that almost like pure protein source, right? Really low calorie at about 100 to 110 calories per serving with roughly 23 grams of protein per serving, which is just a great ratio of calories to protein. In addition, right, doesn't really offer us any other fats or any other carbs. So it gives us a great base for a protein source that we can then just build off of for that meal. Next up on our list is tuna. Tuna is a great, like quick grab and go emergency option when you just don't really have another protein source and you need to find something and put something together re relatively quickly, right? You can go get a pack of tuna or a can of tuna with some crackers and get a couple veggies that you can put on top of there and right, you got a quick little like adult lunchable you've made. All right, so we're moving on to the fourth and final section of our high protein food lists, ideal for a calorie deficit and weight loss. And in this section, we're gonna cover lentils and beans. Now, lentils and beans aren't particularly like pure protein or right isolated protein. They normally have some carbohydrates associated with them. But right, we also have another population where of vegetarians and vegans who don't eat animal-based proteins. These are another great option. And even for people that are an animal-based protein uh, preference of eating their protein sources, the, having some extra beans, lentils, have a significant health benefit, including uh, increasing the overall fiber content. They also offer a ton of micronutrients, so vitamins and minerals. So including beans and lentils as a protein source can not only help you boost your protein, but it can also help boost things like fiber intake and other nutrients like vitamins and minerals. So first on our list of beans and lentils are lentils themselves. Lentils are a great source of protein protein and fiber. So for about 100 calories, there are seven grams of protein and then several grams of fiber that are associated with that as well. So making uh, lentils and adding it to a soup or adding it to a side of rice can be a great way to increase your overall protein intake without blowing your calories out of the water. Next up on our list is gonna be roasted edamame. This is one of my favorite like crunchy snacks uh, to have throughout the day. It offers about uh, 14 grams of protein for 130 calories and it's tasty. Uh, in addition to the roasted edamame, you can also just do like frozen or fresh edamame and also boost the protein through uh, that source as well by adding it to a salad or adding it to some rice. Uh, finally on our list, this is number 17, roasted chickpeas or just chickpeas in general. Uh, I personally like roasted chickpeas. Again, they're a nice crunchy snack that I can have throughout the day that give me some protein, that give me some fiber, and then just also satisfy that kind of crunchy texture, salty taste uh, that I'm sometimes looking for in the afternoon. At about 120 calories, you get about six grams of protein. And not only do you get the six grams of protein, but you're also getting some fiber and some other micronutrients as well. So I think chickpeas are definitely something that you should put on your list of high protein food sources that are ideal for weight loss and a calorie deficit. All right, so that concludes us for the 17 foods and the four food groups that we covered for ideal protein sources for weight loss and a calorie deficit. Now, let's talk about a few tips for increasing your total protein intake while trying to stay in a calorie deficit. So some easy ways to increase your protein intake while in a calorie deficit are to First, choose lower calorie, higher protein options, right? We went through this list and you saw things like tuna, things like tilapia. There was also things like chicken breasts or Greek yogurt. These were things that really only had sources of protein and they're relatively low calorie, about 100 calories for roughly, call it 13 to 17 grams of protein, right? That's a really easy way to increase your protein while not overdoing your calories. The second tip that I have for you is to actually have an, a goal per meal uh, that you have for protein. So shooting for about 20 to 40 grams of protein per meal uh, is gonna help you like, just stack up some wins and get to that daily protein goal every single day. 
So right, if you follow this list, you grab some protein items, you start making some meals, now you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Each one has 20 to 40 grams of protein, right? That is somewhere between 60 to 120 grams of protein every single day if you just followed that right there. The final tip that I have for you for easy ways to increase your protein while not blowing your calories out of the water is actually track your calories and your macros. It's hard to keep all that math in your head. So just jotting down what you had for breakfast, what you had for lunch, what you had for dinner in a food tracking app like Chronometer can be really useful to just double check, am I hitting my protein goal and am I going over my calorie range? Again, I'm Noah Excella. I'm a registered dietitian. And if you like this video and you got something out of it, please uh, give it a like. If you have questions or if you have other protein sources that you feel like should be on this list leave a comment down below and let's uh, let's open a conversation about some other protein sources i missed include us and to make sure that we wrap out this video nicely we discussed today why protein was important we looked at 17 different high protein sources specifically for weight loss and a calorie deficit and we also then looked at easy tips and tricks for increasing your protein while in a calorie deficit i hope you guys enjoyed and until next time